So it's a beautiful Saturday here in little old New Zealand, and this weekend I am going to be a real weekend warrior, as I have three projects that I'm currently working on, coding projects. Number one is going to be from cradle to grave. I'm going to be building out the entire project, and it's for an upcoming Next.js course. It should be loads of fun. Number two is a project that I already have, Bad Hunter, if you've already seen it. I've got some new features that I want to add to it. And number three is another one that I'm starting from the very beginning. I'll probably get about 20 or 30% of the way into it, but I've got a big picture on what it's meant to look like up here. And in the grand scheme of things, that's actually bananas, you know? What a privilege to be able to sit here and just, you know, meander and mull over what I want these things to look like, what I want them to be able to do, just have a, have a good ponder, and then go and build them, you know, super quickly. You know, pretty much my entire direction before I even touched a laptop. And I was reflecting, thinking back to when I first began my coding journey, and that's crazy. Like, literally, that is insane. If I were to tell my old self, like, this is what you'd be doing soon, you could just, like, you know, sit down for a weekend, whip, whip open the, the VS Code editor and just bake up an absolute delectable project. That's bananas. Because when I first started, I sucked so hard at coding. I remember when I first made the decision to join the realm of programming. I started off in free code camp. I don't know that's what I do now, but that's what I did back in the day. And I was going through their little HTML program and they introduced me to an anchor tag. And, you know, two words, anchor and tag. First up, tags. What is a tag? I had no intrinsic understanding of what a tag is, let alone an anchor tag. Nowadays, I'm like, oh, that's so rudimentary. It's a tag, which is just an element and it anchors you to another link or it links you to something else like it's the, it's the most basic thing to understand. But back in the day, I was just completely befuddled by these anchor tags. And that's just one of so many examples. I remember when I first came across the JavaScript array method, the dot map, you know, nowadays it's so simple. It's like, okay, you have a cart full of bottles. You have an, a list of bottles or something like that, empty milk bottles. And you go through every one, you iterate over every milk bottle in the, in the little crate or whatever. And you come away from it with fill milk bottles. And that's pretty much what the dot map, map method is. You iterate over a bunch of stuff and you return a modified version of the original thing. And it's, I use it all the time. It's so simple. I don't even have to think about it. But back in the day, you know, I had some map questions and I was just like, say who, what now? You know, map, you mean Dora the Explorer, go to my backpack and find something or, you know, what are, what are we actually talking about here? And I just... I remember, I specifically remember that concept taking me like a, a week to learn. And that's not even feel confident with using it. I remember when I first started Python, you know, Python, they're like, oh, everyone's like, it's such an easy language. But then, you know, you have to deal with virtual environments to make sure you don't get dependency conflicts. And suddenly the complexity just rocketed through the roof and I remember having you know conflicting dependencies and not being able to just even run my file let alone write any python and I just you know you follow a tutorial they do these things you do the exact same things and it doesn't work for you and I, I just sat there for days smacking my head against the wall because I just couldn't get my thing to even run let alone test if I'd written the code correctly and I sucked so hard at programming. And in this, you know, ultimate reflection of how far I think I've come, you know, I still have a lot to learn, but, you know, I feel blessed with the ability that I have at the moment. I was wondering, you know, like what, at what point did everything change? When did I start not sucking? And I think for me, I would say there were four key phases in my journey from being the bottom of the barrel you know, the bottom of the food chain, from not being able to understand what an anchor tag in HTML is, to being able to just casually whip up projects left, right, and center for my YouTube. Or, you know, I feel like building something, and I, you know, you could, th you could throw just about anything at me, and I feel like I'd come up with a solution. So, what were the core steps of sucking until suddenly I didn't suck at programming? 
And yeah, as I said, there's four. I think they're all kind of important. And the last one is probably that I've labeled it the critical mass. And if you have any understanding of nuclear reactions in uh, nuclear physics, if you want a big bomb to explode, essentially what you need is a critical mass of radioactive material to start a nuclear reaction. And that's when I think, you know, when I hit this critical mass, this moment of singularity, that's when my programming ability just absolutely exploded and just felt limitless. So that was a pretty cool moment to hit. But anyway, that's step four. We have to go through the first three steps to reach that point. And this is what I felt were my core developmental phases. So phase one is just really sucking. You know, you have to smack your head against the wall constantly. It, you feel like a failure. You, you, you know, like if I were to compare myself or back then, if I were to look where I felt like I should be, how, how am I ever supposed to do that? That just feels like the craziest undertaking, especially because I taught myself I didn't have a, a boot camp or a program. How am I supposed to get from point A to point B with such an obfuscated journey? That's That just seems impossible. And I think the, the trick to suffer, you, you know, you have to do your sufferance, you have to earn your stripes. And I think the the core takeaway from phase one, when everything feels like it sucks, when you feel like you're failing every single day, when you ask yourself, are you ever going to be able to do it? When you wonder if you're even cut out for it in the first place, is to forget about what the future holds and just show up. You know, really, if you just show up, even if it's just like 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes a day, just show up 1% a day. Even if you feel like some days you make no progress, just showing up is the core thing to beating phase one. And when you make that a habit and when you show up consistently, I'd say the same goes for probably a lot of different things. With my YouTube, I remember when I started a YouTube, I watched a video and Mr. Beast was like, you have to make a hundred really sucky videos before you'll even make one good video. And I think the same goes for coding. You have to show up a hundred days consistently and just really have a rough time before you will, maybe not a hundred days, but you just have to show up every single day. If you fail, I know it's tough, but you gotta, it's what takes you into phase two. So phase two, once you've just gotten to the habit of showing up is failing like a, like a winner. You know, when you, when you can learn to lean into failure and be cool with just sucking, you know, you just own it. You're just like, I'm, I'm the bottom of the food chain. I am the newbie programmer. I, I suck. I'll probably fail at everything I try to do. And I'm just like, cool with that. You know, then what I think you can do is you, you find it easy to show up. So you've got time and energy to do something else, which is actually really starting to learn from these failures. And they call it falling, failing forwards, I think, or you know, something like that. And essentially what it involves is suddenly, instead of failing being like a, a massive slap in the face, you start to realize that it's actually a form of success. Everything you try that doesn't work actually takes you one step closer to finding the thing that does work. And a lot of people don't even realize this, but that's literally what being a programmer is. Being a programmer is someone giving you a problem and you just smash your head against a wall with enough persistence and determination trying a million different things until eventually something works and you have a solution and maybe you have 10 solutions and you pick the best one. That's a, that's like the day to day of being a programmer, but most people don't know that, you know, programmers, only very experienced programmers get the solution on the first try. And, you know, until you are at that point, then you're going to have to fail. And so failing forward is such a critical skill to become cool with and instead of having that whole beat yourself up period where you just feel like you can't do anything successfully and you're not cut out for it, you're just like, okay, cool, that didn't work. Let's try the next thing. And being able to just have so many solutions that you just feel like no matter how many times you get beat down, you're just going to try something else until eventually something works. That mindset, that ability to keep going is, is the trick to really overcoming phase two of sucking. You know, it's like a redirection. It's like really finessing. If you imagine it's like a compass or a bearing, you like go in these directions. This one takes you over here. You realize you missed the mark. You probably overcorrect over here. And every time you just refine that process until you find the perfect direction. So that's step two is being cool with sucking and owning. And it's a humbling experience. It's good to be modest, but it's an important skill to have. Number three is getting an intuition for finding the right approach. So 
for me, when I was learning to code, you know, there's 101 bajillion different resources on the internet. Everyone's got an opinion of how you should go about it. And it's looking, you know, learning how to cut the fat, trim the fat, you know, and essentially refine the process and just having an intuition for what direction is going to be best. Learning how to resource yourself, such an important skill. You know, you start, you get like an intuition. You're like, mm, I don't know that I really want to check that out. Or maybe you're like, okay, I'm I'll follow this advice, but it feels a bit iffy. I might compare it to a couple of different things. And you're like, you know, you try a couple of things. You're like, no, that is, that's totally the way forward. And just getting that experience is such an important part of not sucking at programming. For me, if we think about actually learning to code, it was, it was like the, the means and methods of actually learning to code. You know, I did free code camp where they give you little problem statements and they give you some explanations and you kind of write some code and like that was all good but i got to the end of it and i just really you know couldn't recall it i didn't know what the application of it looked like i didn't know holistically how this all worked but projects for me project-based learning which is you know core to my whole youtube channel is what really was my modus operandi for learning to code i just think that it you know, like being able to build something and see how the whole system interacts or it all comes together and, you know, being able to have a project in mind, you know, like I had so many things. It's, it's such a funny mentality. People are like, oh, I've got this cool project that I want to build, but I don't have all the knowledge and skills to be able to build it. So I'm, I'm not ready. I might just put that in the backlog for the minute. And they never try because they're afraid of failing. And overcoming that mentality and just being like you know what let's risk it for the biscuit and see how we go is was so important for me because I just go out try something and because I have that enthusiasm for what I'm doing it made it a million times easier to have the ability you know have the persistence and determination to show up on a day-to-day -day basis and struggle through the hardship of the unknown and not having all the solutions at my fingertips until eventually I did have them because I tried and tried again. And yeah, I just think start stuff when you're not ready. Everybody, if you don't even start because you're afraid of failing, then you've already failed. So start when you're not ready because the only way to know that you're actually not ready is to start and find out. And even if you do find or get stuck, that's what being a programmer is. Just go find a solution. That's why I feel like nowadays you could throw anything at me because I just figure it out. Even if it's something I've never seen before, you know, half the stuff we make together on this channel, I just had a, you know, a general curiosity for it, went out, figured it out, got comfortable with it, built some stuff with it. And then I feel cool to make a tutorial about it because I understand the ecosystem and that's the whole process. So and the other cool thing about this is that you you actually start to build up a catalog of stuff. So nowadays my GitHub has like a, you know, a good 250 different learning resources. And I know how to reference them being like, oh, this is where I did X, Y, and Z. And I know how to adapt that for the future. And talk about such a valuable resource. So step number, phase three is finding the right approach. What works for you? And for me, it's a combination of starting stuff even when I'm not ready on the condition that I'm curious and intrigued by it because then I know I'll be able to you know I'll have that drive to be able to figure out whatever it is I don't know and then suddenly it's the perfect learning opportunity because I started here and even though the project might have been up here I was able to rise above and overcome the challenges that I was confronted with and ultimately you finish being in a better place a better programmer you've just got suddenly so much more knowledge and that could be both what does work and what doesn't work because like you know everything in programming has its pros and cons so now you could be like oh which which tech solution should i use for this project or which way should i go about developing this feature and i can be like well this stuff doesn't work in this context it might work in that context i've tried all these six different things and you know it's all valuable experience even if it might have been classified as a failure at the beginning so that's the third phase. So suddenly, you know, if we were to summarize, first, you have to suck and you have to show up. That's important. Second is suddenly you start to fail like a winner. You fail forward. You know, it's just part of the learning process. You're cool with it. And suddenly you're so much faster at iterating and learning from those failures until you find success. And then number three is having the right approach to learning, which for me was project-based learning and just diving in 
head first. And if you get stuck, then go figure it out and become unstuck. And that's just the process of programming. And finally, step four is critical mass, which is where the nuclear reaction really happens and suddenly you are propelled to programming brilliance like an absolute rocket ship is finishing stuff. Eventually, when you do those first few phases enough, you'll start finishing some projects. And there is nothing that will boost your confidence and ego like having a finished project that's deployed to the internet that you share with your family and friends, even if it still sucks. You have completed something that is truly yours. And I'm not talking about a clone. You know, a clone, you've just been spoon-fed information. You know, I'm talking about something that is truly yours. And even, you know, I always say when you're learning to code, do a tutorial and adapt it. Adapt it until it's so far and you can't even recognize the original project inside it. And it will become truly yours. And when you have that deployed live to the internet, my first project still looked so bad. You know, I was just at the very beginning of a new stage of becoming a pro programmer. You know, I could build stuff, which is so cool. You can just have an idea and you can, you can stumble and figure it out and they will still suck. They will look bad, but it's still a complete thing. And then suddenly you go through these phases for building applications and you learn, you know, you enter into a new realm of understanding and opportunity and you suck at that until suddenly you don't suck because you just have that persistence. You fail forward and you apply those same skills to beat that new stage of learning to become an absolutely brilliant programmer. You know, and it's such a confidence boost having these projects in your portfolio. And as you get faster and faster at building out new ideas and exploring new things, you just grow your knowledge base. You have even more understanding of what does and doesn't work. You know, you have so much experience to draw on. Nowadays, the reason I can build so many things in a weekend is because I know exactly what I want for each of them because I've done it before, you know, or I might have seen it somewhere else and I can just incorporate that into whatever I'm doing. And I can just lift off without even needing a run up. And that's a skill that you build over time. But those really are the four core phases, in my opinion, to sucking at programming. And then suddenly you realize that you no longer suck. And even if you're still a bit of a noob, a bit of a pleb, a layman in the, in the world of programming, you're one step closer to being an absolute maestro. And you just have to keep showing up, keep failing forward, keep doing stuff that is interesting for you because that's what's really going to generate that fire for growth and development and keep gaining experience. And those are the, those are fundamentally the four things that will turn you into, you know, a wizard of a programmer. Anyway, I just thought I'd share my two cents on what I really felt for me was, was the night and day difference to me sucking at programming so extremely hard until suddenly it didn't feel like it sucked anymore and now it's something that i find relaxing and rejuvenating and it's a brilliant creative outlet for me on the weekend anyway if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons stay tuned for the next js course that's coming out soon and i'll catch you guys later peace learning to code if so be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos That's a good one.